Well, good morning, and as you can see, I am out on the bank, squeezing in a day session between that period of sort of Christmas to New Year, where you don't know what day it is, let alone anything else. But first and foremost, I hope you've had a, uh, a brilliant Christmas with your family, with your friends. I hope you've eaten too much, I hope you drank too much, and I hope you've got some really, really cool carpy Christmas presents. Now, uh, I got here around sort of 7 a.m. It was pitch black, and uh, with the weather that we're due today, potential sort of heavy downpours, um, wind and really mild temperatures. I took the opportunity whilst it was dark basically to just get the brolly set up, get myself tucked up under there, get all three rods sorted, ready to flick out where I'm going to be fishing. Firstly though, before I get them rods out, I need to uh, just go and dip that lot. Net, max, net mat and sling, there is a dip tank on site and then uh, we'll come back, flick these rods out and uh, yeah, see if we can make something happen throughout the day. So I'm at Woodside Lakes. I am on Alder Pool. You would have seen a video from this session before this was actually open to the uh, general public. Yeah, I've done a, I come down and done a, done a, a session a couple of nights down here and uh, give it a bit of a test run. But uh, I've been very kindly been given the opportunity to fish on it for the uh, for the day. So. As I say, I need to go and dip this lot, come back and flip the rods out, I'll talk you through tactics, all that business throughout the session, hopefully we can nick one or two fish along the way. an exclusive booking lake so there's two sort of swims at either well, one swim at either end which will accommodate two anglers they're sort of like a nice big double swim all sort of barked out and stuff like that so you could easily get sort of a couple of brollies on there or a, a double bivy that sort of thing and you get pretty much like half the lake each um, on this session I'm just kind of situating myself in between one of the little holes uh, in the sort of marginal sort of shrubbery there just to try and cover as much water as possible really so you can use free rods on here my right hand um, just flipped out into this area um, <clears throat> I've never actually had a fish out of this area so I'm persevering with it apart from the corner of this island where I was getting bites from um, back in the sort of summer when I sort of give it a little a little road test as such there's a sort of a three foot uh, three, three, three and a half foot sort of little shelf there and uh, that was like the hot spot but it's about five foot out in sort of open water once it comes down from the edges and I've never had a bite out of there so I'm persevering with that one because I want to get a bite from this sort of open water area the left hander and the sort of middle they've both just gone sort of down into this area here um, just kind of three quarters of the way down really it goes down sort of five, six, seven right down to eight foot down to an, into a little sort of end bay area so it is a deeper water it is on the end of this really 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 warm breeze it's like 10 uh, 10 degrees it was this morning when i got in the car at like six o'clock um and it's only gonna get warmer you know 10 11 12 i think it goes right up to 14 degrees so you never know they've this kind of all bases covered really the deeper water coming right up to the round sort of like the five foot water but it's really uniform throughout uh, back in the summer I literally done a whole sort of map of the lake with the deeper and uh, like I say there's no ups and downs or anything like that it's a clean bottom it's just like I say uniform throughout apart from the hump on the corner of this island the rest of it is featureless so it's a really clean bottom so you can get away with solid bags and pretty much most presentations but uh, that is exactly what I've done just chucked out three solid bags so three mouthfuls of uh, edge pellet maggot sea monster wafter hook baits topped off with uh topped off with six or seven maggots which i will show you a little bit later on 
but I've just tried to cover really as much water as possible. I'll probably recast them every couple of hours um, just to see if I can uh, yeah, drop a bag amongst any fish if I am scratching for a bite. So whilst I've got the rod in, I'll very quickly talk you through how I've got it set up. Now this is my sort of take anywhere solid bag set up really. Um, you know, a foot or so of tubing, solid bag stem, two and a half ounce inline flat pair, real short sort of three and a half inch supple rig, loads of movement, big size four wide gape, trimmed down sea monster wafter, and that is because I am going to be tipping it off with uh, six or seven red maggots. So for the uh, purpose of just showing you on this uh, video, I've uh, already sort of preloaded up the uh, the needle. So I've got six or seven maggots on there. I've got bait floss through the eye of the needle with a good enough amount of bait floss at either end to allow me to uh, tie it onto the end of my rig. So what I'm going to do is essentially place one of those tag ends through the loop of the hair rig and then tie it down with a couple of uh, slide the maggots down and then tie it off with a couple of uh, sort of granny knots really so nothing too complicated at all a little bit fiddly just getting the uh, just getting the maggots and stuff on the uh, on the needle and obviously getting the bait floss through the eye that's why I've loaded it up already but essentially just get this hair open slide one end of the tag end through the uh, loop of the rig like so so like that so as you can see it's gone through and all I'm going to do is just slide the maggots down the bait and uh, slide the maggots down the sewing needle onto the uh, onto the floss like I say, it is a bit fiddly, but it's worth it. The presentation looks awesome. Um, so, as you can see now, of course, there were six or seven maggots on the floss. The needle's gone. It's still passed through the uh, loop end of the hair rig. And I am just going to then tie a couple of granny knots to stop those... Uh, maggots and the bait floss from sliding off that will just be pulled down nice and tight one two do one more for luck three and essentially that is then what you're left with all I need to do then now is very carefully trim the tag ends of the bait floss without cutting any of the maggots because that is the last thing you want is a uh, maggot juice all inside your bag because it's going to melt the PVA before you've even got it out so there we go as you can see all you need to do is just slide the wafter down which gives you the separation between the hook and the bait that will then obviously just sit flush amongst the uh, contents of the PVA bag that'll just sit upright like so and those maggots will just be sat there lovely amongst the offerings of the uh, solid bag all I need to do now is just dust it off in my solid bag bucket. So I'll just get my bucket, drop the rig in, cover the hook, the lead and the components. And as you can see, any moisture has been taken out by the dust of the solid bag bucket. So even if one, of those, one or two of those little maggots even have a little drop of juice coming out of them, that's just going to be dried up by the powder that I've got in my solid bag bucket. So I know now when I'm building this bag, that isn't going to melt on me. So let's get this one sorted, get the left hander in as well, drop them into a slightly different area of the lake. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll be able to nick, this, nick a bite this side of dinner time. Now building the bag couldn't be any simpler. What I do is drop the rig in first, pinching the lead at the top. As you can see, the uh, rig is uh, 
ideal in length because there's no coils, no loops, anything like that. I get the uh, hook bait in one corner. With it being a maggot sort of tipper, I don't tend to push it into the corner as far because I don't want, like I say, I don't want to burst any of those maggots because then that PVA will just start to melt, all the pellets will come out and it's pretty much pointless. So I'll just kind of slide it into the corner where it just nuzzles down in itself. Normally if I've got a waft there, I'll jam it right into the corner to get the bag nice and tight. What I'll then do is start to fill the bag. So I'll, I'll always go in with a bed of uh, pellet to start with. This is the uh, Baitworks Edge pellets, absolutely bang on for uh, solid bags. So I'll always go in with them first because when I then start to put my maggots in, none of these maggots are going to get impaled on the uh, on the hook point. So to match the uh, to match the hook bait and the six or seven maggots that I've got on the hook, I am just basically layering up the bag. So small handful of red wrigglers in there. I'll then stick another small handful of pellet on there. So again, another layer, and that then allows me just to lower the lead on top of it. It just gives it a bit more of a firmer base so that for any reason, the weight of the lead isn't popping any of the maggots inside. So then again, just start to build it up again. Maggots, pellet, maggots, pellet, until you give yourself enough room to uh, operate around the top of the bag. Always tend to leave about a sort of centimetre or so around the top of the bag just to allow me to one either lick and stick so in the summer months I'll just lick and stick the bag around the stem and that'll basically be nice and tight and I'll tuck in the corners but because the actual water is quite cold uh, and I find that you do get a little bit of sort of PVA snot around the uh, the solid bag stem or your leader where there's obviously a big bunch of PVA in there it's just cold and it hasn't just dissolved it properly I tend to just tie it off so I'll just twist it around ever so slightly because I'm only fishing you know 30 40 yards if that I'm just tying it uh, tightening it around the stem ever so slightly wrap it around twice with a PVA tape couple more granny knots snip off the tag ends trim off the excess tuck in the corners very very slightly and then that's good to go the bag doesn't need to be um, you know doesn't need to be neat and tidy because I'm fishing so you know close distances where I'm not having to uh, not having to whack it out far so it doesn't have to be the tidiest but it's more about just making sure I'm not popping those maggots inside the bag so I'm gonna finish this one off like I say get this one out get the other one sorted and uh, yeah fingers crossed we can nick a bite I haven't really got much to go on at the moment. What I do know though, a small amount of perch in this lake um, seem to be enjoying the uh, seem to be enjoying the maggots. Two out of three rods that I recast about half an hour, 45 minutes or so ago, come in with no maggot tippers left. So I think we're gonna have to increase the regularity of the times that I basically uh, recast throughout the rest of this afternoon. Um, at the moment, I brought one rod down with me to the swim that's kind of far down on my right and uh, just chucking over to an area that's kind of unreachable from both swim driven reason unless you kind of stood over here in this corner and putting it down behind the back of the island. Now, <clears throat> you know, it's not unsafe or anything like that. There's no sort of snags or, or you know, hanging trees or anything like that that's going to stop me from getting that fish landed if I'm uh, lucky enough to get a pick up um, so it's an area of water that I haven't put a rod down sort of you know a bait down into yet so I'm going to give it a go and uh, that's where it's been sat for the last half an hour or so so I think I'm going to increase like I say the, the amount of uh, time that we cast it feels banging for a bite as well the weather is absolutely bang on um, you know it's probably a good 10 12 degrees it's a nice chop coming through from right to left so you know it feels really really good for a bite right well that rod that uh, I sort of put along 
the sort of back face of the island. It's done pretty much absolutely zero. So looking to just mix things up again, change things up, move it, stick it in a different area. And uh, what I'm going to do is just pop it down into this sort of area here. About a rod lamp, two rod lamps off this far side margin. water is trickling through there, I don't know if you can see it all, but, albeit very gently, but there's a fresh trickle of water coming through there, and uh, that may, may just be the difference of a bite, just something like that with a little bit of water just being pushed through, bits and pieces just being washed through, washed up, in and around this area sticking the bag down for an hour or so might just come and just flick a very light trickle in the maggots out as well but it's got to be worth a go there's nothing else happening like I said the water has been out me well over an hour now if not longer because I have done the other two in the meantime so I'm gonna get another bag made up drop it in that area give it a little spray of maggots see if that will nick me a bite Well then, the afternoon has uh, disappeared in the blink of an eye and uh, unfortunately it's been uneventful on the fish front as well. I've been uh, up and down this bank just constantly watching left, right and centre, recasting the rods every sort of 60 to 90 minutes, um, just trying to entice a bite really, changing the uh, hook bait colour, changing the amount of maggots that I'm putting on the, the sort of uh, topper. Um, just everything and anything I could possibly do, you know, trying different areas of the lake, just trying to entice one bite. Um, although it looks relatively bright out there, it's actually uh, come over quite overcast, and uh, it seems like the rain is uh, is starting. It's that sort of misty, fine rain that just gets everything drenched within minutes. So uh, I may need to just uh, sit tight under this brolly for a little while, and hopefully it passes. Because uh, ideally, I wouldn't want to go home with uh, with wet gear. But if it means uh, I'm stood out in it and I'm uh, landing a fish, and I'll be more than happy. But um, it looks like if I am going to catch anything, it's going to probably be through the hours of darkness. So probably a couple of hours, half four to around half six. The gate shut at seven, so I don't really want to be any longer than sort of half six. So. Fingers crossed that there's a uh, last chance bite on the cards. Well, as you can see, light is fading fast, but I'm not complaining too much because uh, I've got one in the net. Now it's uh, only a small common, nothing to uh, scream or shout about, but just as it's starting to get dark, it rattles into life. So I've unhooked it in the net. I'll leave it in the net there for a minute. I'll uh, get the rod sorted, get a bag sorted. It's just literally coming up to half past four, so I've got another two hours yet before um, I've got to make a dash for it. So quickly get this bag sorted, whack it straight back down there, and we'll get that little fish out on the mat and have a bit of a closer look. Uh, a couple of fish in the net now. Managed to um, manage to unhook him in there as well. So yeah, nice little common, nice little mirror. So here's the first one. Angry little common. 
got his dorsal up for full effect add that sort of right down from that seven seven foot of water right down the uh, other end of the lake it's a uh, immaculate both sides but yeah really really happy with that it's well worth waiting out for get two bites in sort of two minutes one of the rods has gone back out so uh, there's always chance of another one just quickly swing it around show the other side but yeah just as just as immaculate just as angry slip this one back get the net set back up just in case the hat trick happens and we'll get the other one out the retainer and have a little look well there we go then the uh, second one of that two minute manic spell nice little mirror mid, mid doubles probably yeah look at him really really clean believe it or not he's actually uh, got a few leeches attached to his side so uh, looks like he's a little bit in starting to become in winter mode already just slowing up not really getting around the lake much giving me a good scrap on the mat though come on mate but yeah look at him really really clean fish don't expect anything less to be quite honest really nice scale pattern down by the wrist of his tail just have a little look at the other side again just so pretty yeah look at him here we go look again pretty much identical that side as it was the first side really really happy with that one quickly get some snaps slip it back and uh, get that other rod back out oh, oh, what a manic 15 15 minutes sorting all that lot out wasn't expecting to at once but uh, yeah I'm definitely not going to complain got a feeling the uh, contents of the bucket somewhere within the mud underneath my feet so I managed to kick that over in the uh, mad dash to the rods in disbelief that it was going off again but uh, yeah definitely not complaining knees are caked in mud moots uh, boots are caked in mud everything else is probably ringing wet and caked in mud as well but you know what I really couldn't care two fish happy days well worth sitting it out for and uh, persevering so got about an hour and a half left so I'm gonna get this second rod made back up get that straight back down there on the end of that wind and uh yeah see if we can go for the hat trick before home time right then gonna keep this outro really short and sweet as you can see back in the car everything's packed down i milked it to the last minute but i couldn't make the hat trick unfortunately but i'm not complaining i'm wet i'm muddy and i'm stinking a carp but that's all that matters so those of you that have followed me through 2021 i just want to say a massive thank you thanks for all your support your likes your comments your general interest in my fishing it really really is appreciated um, here's to 2022 so I want to wish you all a happy new year um, you know all the best in your own fishing all the best in your own health and everything else so thanks again for your support as always feel free to like comment below etc etc you know the score I'm gonna get myself off for a no uh, get myself off home for a nice warm shower get some food and I'll catch up with you next time I am out on the bank <laughs>